Terra Luna Classic has done its first pump towards its 500% rocket that we anticipated a few weeks back. Now we're gonna look at what's likely to occur next for the next pump because these patterns are identifiable in advance and your job is to prepare and anticipate so you can maximize the amount of money that you make. So if you like today's content, give me the thumbs up, share this with anyone that you know is interested in Terra Luna Classic because the chart patterns are very, very nice indeed. So let's now dive straight in. So Terra Luna Classic, we did a video on this on early September, right? And we said it's exploded and how to take profit. So initially we were really focused on the explosive overextension and you wanna be playing this like a pro. And when you see these kind of price actions, this is so, so important to maximize your profit taking at these swing lows, at these swing lows. Because what happened next with Terra Luna, just as we anticipated in advance, is we had that big correction. And that's gonna happen time and time again with all markets and all time frames. When we see a big wave five like this, called it a wave five, this is called hopium. <laughs> it's fingers crossed, right? Hopium. And if you're making profits in that with fifth wave, you need to get ready to take profits because what occurred next was a big correction. How do you anticipate a hopium? Well, I've actually just created my new masterclass. We just updated this and it's the four secrets you must know to make money trading the markets. Really powerful. And it's all about changing from lagging, which is like in the past information, to leading. Looking into the future, the psychology and the price action of fear and greed, so you can know when to buy, when to sell, and anticipate trend reversals. It's free. The link is in the description below. So going back to Terra Luna, right? We did another video, I think it was on the 15th of September. And what we said is ready to explode by 500% to the upside. And there was particular ratios of why we said that. And I explained it on the 15th. And what we're going to do now is go back into Terra Luna. We can look. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit over here. Like so. And we anticipated this also. This, this initial pump, right? This, this, this low. What you want to know is markets tend to move in fives and threes. 40 to 75% of the time, sometimes 60% of the time, the patterns are clear. And the thing that you're looking for in really simple terms is an initial wave up, a correction, an impulsive wave three, a correction, and then a wave five. Sometimes the wave five is the extended wave, it's the hopium wave, but more often than not, it's actually wave three. And then anticipate a pullback of an A, B, C correction. It's the most common correction. Think of this like a sprint, and then the market needs a rest period, it needs a breather, it needs to recover. And look at Terra Luna's price. We've had this amazing sprint. In this scenario, it was the wave five that was the extended wave. This is hopium. This is fear of missing out. That's just the nature of the game. The first leg to the downside tends to be quite aggressive when the fifth wave is quite aggressive. And then we got this wave B and a wave C. And we anticipated this in advance. We even did a video on this day before this initial move here. So now what we're going to do is just really get fine-tuned on what we should anticipate with Terra Luna Classic based on the buying and selling behavior. So this is where it is right now. So again, I covered this in more detail in the masterclass, but wave structure, buying and selling behavior has different degrees of waves. So there's waves within the waves. So what I mean by this is the following. This here is a wave two, right? So it's just a wave two. But within a wave two is three waves. So we can look at this and we go, okay, it looks like a A, B, C, very common very predictable once you kind of know the basics. But then the wave C in itself, I'm going to go into a bit of detail. We're going to go into a lower degree time frame. This is a daily chart. We're going to go into an hourly chart in a second. But if I zoom in over here, it's clearer on the hourly chart, but this wave C broke down to a one, two, three, four, five. And that really allows us to narrow this down. So what we're going to ask ourselves now is what is the market doing? What's the buying behavior? How is the crowd feeling? Because individuals are unpredictable, but crowds are relatively predictable, right? And that's what Ralph Nelson Elliott figured out in the 18 and 1900s. It's just hundreds years ago, right? So what we want to look at this is a, right, this is a, an initial move up. And this is the equivalent of this initial move up. What do you notice as the difference between the two? Well, one is the second, the one on the right is bigger. It's bigger than the first one. So it's like the markets expand on a larger degree. So what we've seen here, and this is what you really want to get into your mind, what we saw here 
as this one, two, three, four, five of a wave one, of a wave one over here, right? What we've seen there is more than likely gonna repeat itself over again, but in a more expanded way because it's almost like the proof is in the pudding. People have seen it and they don't wanna miss out on the next wave and the next wave tends to be a wave three. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about 500%, literally just objective information. So let's just do a bit of vision talk for, for a second. What I mean by that is forecast in the future. Now, there's a difference between forecasting and trading. Forecasting, we're just you know, literally looking to the future and just seeing what's very likely to occur. So what's very likely to occur is that this is just the initial move down, up, so up. <laughs> this here looks like the initial move down. Then we're probably going to get a wave three, four. And if, if the wave five is anything like the wave five in, in wave one, it's probably going to be overextended, right? That's what we're looking for. That was more than likely. And by the way, when we did the video over here, it's on the 1st of September. We was anticipating this in advance. And then when we did the video on the 15th of September, we were anticipating this in advance. And now we can look at this and say, right, it's playing out. The crowd is playing out like it should, right? The market doesn't owe us anything. The market is not due to do this. But our job as investors and traders is to identify the edge, like the high probability outcome, and then trade that edge with confidence. So what we're looking at here, and I'm going to go into a bit of detail with the hourly chart in just a second, is again, I'm going to emphasize this. This initial move up here, it's quite tiny, right? Is the equivalent of this, or this is the equivalent of this, but on a larger degree. We've had a pullback like this, which is the equivalent of this, right? You see that? So this is a wave two of wave one. This is, looks like a wave two of a wave three. Right? So it's almost like it's magnified. So what should we anticipate next? Well, it's this what's called a wave three of a wave three, similar to this wave three of a wave one. So what we really want to do now is to fine tune this part to go, right, are we, has the end occurred? Or is there buying and selling behavior in terms of the price action that indicates we're going to get one more low? Right? And that's what we're going to look at. So let's just dive into an hourly chart. But before I do, make sure you check out my Four Secrets Masterclass. It is phenomenal. The four secrets you must know to make money trading the market. I'm telling you, if you're finding what I'm covering with Luna Classic, because we cover quite a few videos now with Luna Classic, and it's been pretty much on point. But the method behind the madness, you know, Arthur C. Clarke said it best. He said, any advanced science is indistinguishable from magic. And what we're doing is advanced psychology, applied psychology, but applied market psychology. And we're applying these four secrets. And today we're really double downing on pattern position, psychology in the pattern position, which we can see what's very likely to occur next. Never guaranteed, because we can never guarantee it. But and by the way, it's free and it's in the description link below. So let's now just pop into an hourly chart, right? I'm going to go into the bottom right corner as well, I keep my hourly chart. And what I want to focus on is the last part of the move, right? As in the move to the downside. And what we're going to look at, and we can just, just zoom in, is the wave structure. So one of the great things with Elliott Wave Theory is, well, you, you want to know really two things, right? Two things. Is the market making an impulsive move with higher highs and higher lows or lower lows and, and lower highs uh, without overlapping? Or is it overlapping? And that gives us a massive clue on what's likely to occur next. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So let's just take an example of, uh, let's just let's just take a very obvious example. I'll take an obvious example first. Right, so when we're looking at, this is the hourly chart, but what we can see over here is this is very impulsive up, down, up, down, where this low does not overlap. So that's what we call overlap, um, impulsive. So we've got thumbs up. However, if we just look at now a corrective structure, even if we, even if we just take this structure here, this here, what does this look like? Well, they're overlapping waves, right? So this here is a correction, and this here is impulsive. So then we can look at this part here. This over here is, looks like a correction, and then this part here is impulsive, right? Does that make sense? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the recent data. So e even when we're looking over here, right? Well, clearly, without a shadow of a doubt, this is impulsive, this is corrective. 
This is impulsive, but not as much, right? So what we're going to look at now, using that information, again, by the way, if this is, you know, if you want to pause it, rewind, everything in life is difficult before it's easy, whether you're driving a car, whether you're learning psychology of price patterns. So don't worry if this is going over your head slightly, but the key thing that we want to get across today is the recent buying and selling behavior, right? We're going to look at it from this angle over here. Let me just get it all into the chart over here. Bang. All right. So what we've got is an overlapping wave structure, right, over here. This is not impulsive. And these pullbacks to the upside tend to be in three waves. That's a correction. That's a correction. So what does this look like over here? Well, to me, it looks like a correction. So it doesn't look impulsive. Whereas these micro moves to the downside are more impulsive. Right? So now you can probably distinguish the difference between the two. But what does that tell us? Well, what it tells us is when you see a correction like this and then a low gets taken out, more often than not, the previous low will get exceeded. Right? So we're likely to see Terra Luna Classic go at least another leg to the downside. More than likely. Never guaranteed. The price is going to do what the price is going to do, but it's more than likely. There's a few other things I've got down here, price ratios, but I'm just going to do one particular one that will give us a massive clue on what's very likely to occur, is something called an external retracement. I cover a bit of this in the masterclass, but the key ratio that we want to be aware of on high alert before the next pump that's likely to occur with Terra Luna Classic is this price range here, up to 0 0.00026, right? And what we're looking for is being on high alert down here. Why? Because it could potentially be the end of a correction. We're hitting certain price ratios. We're hitting certain time ratios. We've got pattern position. There are some momentum positions as well. So then what's likely to occur, and we'll wrap up on this, if we just zoom back out like this and just pop here, this is an hourly chart, is we're likely to see the second impulsive leg. So we've had this first leg, but then we're likely in the next one to three days, probably, give or take, probably going to get the next leg up. So we want to anticipate that. There's a few different ways that you can, you know, enter this and manage your positions and everything else. But really what we're doing today is getting two steps ahead of the market. So success is often when preparation meets opportunity, anticipation. So we can anticipate and you can be ahead of the game and then apply this information. So if you like today's content, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Let me know how you found this. Take my masterclass. I'm telling you, it'll take your trading and market analysis to the next level. Whether you're trading or whether you're buying the underlying asset, this psychology applies because you can time the market based on your short-term, medium-term, and long-term strategy and your risk management as well, which comes into play. So let's finish on a quote from my book. I'd like to read a quote from my book, but actually today, um, let's go with... Let's go with, I think it was Churchill that said this one. I think it was Churchill. Uh, I remember writing this quote. I used to have it on my wall when I was 24. I used to pin all these quotes up and read them every single day. And this one was great. He said, if you want to experience the ocean, you must first build the courage to leave shore. And when it comes to investing, trading, money, it can be a very emotional subject because of fear of missing out, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, fear of making mistakes, fear of losing feeling stupid, like people take it way too, not seriously, because it is serious, way too personally, that's the thing. And when it comes to the decision that we're making over here and looking at the market, we do not know what is going to happen next. And we have no way of knowing what is going to happen next. But neither does the casino. But the casino has a 4.5% edge in its favor when it's playing the game of blackjack. So it ultimately wins and the house always wins. And your job is to become the house by stacking the odds in your favor not needing to know what's going to occur next, but when you get it right and what we anticipate is going to occur, you make a lot of money. When it doesn't, you just take a small loss or you break even or you're, you take a bit of a drawdown and that's just the name of the game. So let me know how you found today. Check out the masterclass and I'll see you soon.